Here are some suggestions and tips for working with the Adobe Premiere Pro interface and importing your media into the program. First, I want to take a moment and name the major panels in the editing workspace. Moving clockwise, starting at the bottom left, we have the project panel. This is where you import clips and audio and arrange them all into folders called bins. The source panel on the top left, where you load clips and preview them using the play button here or the spacebar. The program panel on the top right allows you to see the footage in your story. And here's your timeline panel, the place where you'll spend most of your time. Here are the individual clips and the blue playhead, which is the frame shown above in the program panel. Last, we have the tools panel to the left of the timeline and the audio meters to the right. To learn about importing, it's important you understand one thing. Importing means linking. It's crucial you copy all your material before you use it, especially if it's on a card that was in your camera. Premiere Pro now has the capability to copy the media for you while you import it. It's outside the scope of this tutorial, but learning how to properly ingest footage is something great to explore on your own. So I'll just cover the default behavior, importing. First you copy it to your computer, and then you import that copy. Under the File menu is where you'll find Import, and it's great for bringing in a single item but there's a more visual way to import. It's called the Media Browser, and it's found next to the Project Panel on the bottom left. You can see the directory tree on the left of the Media Browser. When I click my drive, it displays folders and files on that drive. On the right side, it's the actual items. So as I double-click through here to the Footage folder, you can see a visual representation of the clips before I bring them in. Before I go any further, though, this media browser panel is beginning to feel a little cramped. The best way to get around that is to use the Maximize feature, the tilde or accent grav key, which you may find to the left of the number one key on many keyboards. The tilde maximizes any panel that your mouse hovers over. Pressing it a second time returns that panel back to normal. You don't need to click to tell it which panel you want to maximize. It's wherever the mouse is. Maximizing the media browser you can see that I can pass my mouse across these clips, seeing a preview. This is called Hover Scrub. It's a great way for you to quickly become familiar with any individual clip, even before it's imported. Importing from the Media Browser can also be done from the File menu, or you can right-click on a clip and choose Import. I'm going to bring in one of these audio clips. Switching to the project panel, you can see it's been imported into the project. It might be better if I put this music in the music bin by dragging it there. I'll tell you in a second how to make your own bins. I can import the rest of these clips, but before I do, notice I have the music bin selected. Going back to the media browser, I'm going to go ahead and select the other clips. Now I can right click and choose import. Back on the project panel, you can see not only have they been imported, but they've been imported directly into your music bin. It's a good thing to know that Premiere Pro imports into whatever bin is currently selected. Here are some tips about organizing your project. I'm going to roll open these bins. Bins with names like these are very common for editors. Bins like sequences, music, footage, B-roll, and interviews. You can create as many bins as you like and rename them later if you want. It makes it easy for you to stay organized and change your organizational style later. Creating a new bin can be done by the file menu, a right click, or by clicking this small icon in the bottom right of the project panel that looks like a folder. So I'm going to create a new bin and call it Imported Music and move the music there. Finally, to be really organized, you can rename clips inside of Premiere Pro. Now the clips in this project have already been renamed, and they still know which media files they're actually linked to. If you name your clips with literal descriptive names, then you can easily find the clip you want later, even if it's buried in a bin, by entering the search term here at the top of the panel. For example, I'm going to search for the word brush. See all the clips that have the word brush in it in any part of their names. 
Just a quick note, I've switched to Windows now to show it doesn't matter which operating system you use. You work in Premiere Pro in the same way. It's important that you click the little X here to clear the search field. Let's go over some other user interface elements. You can resize any panel by dragging. If a panel group is too narrow to display all the available panels, you'll see this double arrow. Click it to see the remaining panel names. It's worth getting to know and explore all the different panels. Here's the History panel, which records past actions just like in Photoshop. To find a specific panel, look for it under the Window menu. At the very top of the menu are workspaces, a collection of differently arranged panels based on specific editing needs. Each of them is optimized for different parts of the editorial process. And you'll notice a list of them across the top of the screen. Just click to go to it. By default, you're in the editing workspace. Don't worry if you move panels, close some, and generally make a mess of things. You can quickly reset the interface. So far your timeline, your story, can be viewed by pressing the play button here under the program panel or by pressing the space bar on your keyboard. Use the up arrow and the down arrow keys to move the playhead to earlier or later clips on the timeline. Or the home and end keys to jump to the beginning or end. The backslash key above the return key or enter key on your keyboard allows you to fit the timeline to the window. Press the plus and minus keys to zoom in and out on the timeline. Adjust track heights by taking your mouse and moving it over the track headers like this. You can also adjust it by using the mouse wheel or two fingers on a trackpad to enlarge or reduce individual tracks. If you need to quickly reset the track heights, Go up to the wrench icon at the top of the timeline and choose Expand All Tracks. One quick note about playback. Highly compressed footage like H.264 or 4K material can really tax systems. Depending on your specific setup, you may find that your system stutters during playback. The first thing to try is to drop your playback quality to one half or one quarter. Formats larger than high definition are fine to view at 1 8 and 1 16th resolutions. It's only downgrading the resolution during playback. When you pause, you'll see everything at its full quality. For those situations where dropping playback resolution doesn't help, I'd encourage you to explore a topic called proxy workflows. And those are just some of the basics of working with the Premiere Pro interface and importing your media.